I had a number of people approach me about the loss history and information, so let me begin at the end. Uh, there's at least two other publications that we have that I'm going to send uh, that will be available via the download or the link, however you give that to the attendees. Also, the presentations, uh, they're not in the book. I'm sure you noticed that a number of people approached me about that. You will get those, again, electronically. Um, I was just in between uh, being in Asia and Latin America and ran out of time. So with that in mind, we'll talk just a little bit about the losses. We've already covered some of this. And I just want to reinforce the fact that <clears throat> I've got a lot of ugly pictures that I've collected over the last 45 years. I can only tell you that in the last 45 years, I've never had a plant manager call me and say, guess what, the plant's running just fine today. <laughs> The, the only time they call me is uh, the transformer's on fire, uh, the generator just coasted to a dead stop with no lube oil, et cetera, et cetera. So the calls are never good. And we're in the middle of renewal right now. Now, we talked a little bit about these, and I want to key into operation and maintenance again because that's the focal point that a lot of the insurance carriers are, are hinging on right now when it comes to renewals. June 1 is a jugular date. We renew about 90% of all the insurance policies that we have with clients happen on June 1. So the period that we're in at this particular moment and what I'm going to be doing tomorrow in London is you're sitting with the insurance underwriters and they're giving you the view of the risk. Very keenly, they're taking a look at how you manage and operate assets and they are very specifically looking at the losses you've had, trying to see if there's a trend. So between today and yesterday, you've got a lot of good information uh, about how things happen, but it helps to understand a little bit more about the failures. And as I said, <clears throat> the two additional publications that I'm going to send uh, to IMAC uh, cover the losses in more detail, and I'll also comment at the very end additional use for this material when you talk about failures. This is not just fun to know stuff. At the end of the day, in particular, if you're in the process of convincing management for more money to do the very monitoring things that you've heard discussed today, the testing, if you're looking for money, trust me, the insurance loss information is a great tool to add to that business case and the argument. We have more clients using the loss information for that very purpose, to convince management to get the money. So it has other uses behind uh, just plain ugly stories. We already talked about the business interruption. And when you build a loss case for money with management, it isn't just physical repairs that have to happen. You have to include in your business case for money from management the potential business interruption which is in the millions without question. So in one case, loss case, this is a statter, it was a partial rewind. And by the way, these are actual losses. There's nothing here that's hypothetical. There's no better way to understand what happens in a power plant to, to take a, than to take a look at actual losses, what happened, who paid how much money, how bloody it actually gets. Property damage, the PD, was 1.6 million, the business interruption or the inability to produce right around eight weeks. Most statters failures are going to be a minimum of about two months. And keep in mind in the business interruption side of the insurance mm -hmm. issue, the deductibles are not dollars. The deductibles are time. So when the insurance carrier says you have a 30-day deductible, a 60-day deductible, what they're saying to you is you'll get nothing for the first 30 days or the first six, you're on your own. Okay? So it's critical to have the business plans in place, know exactly what you're going to do when you need to make a repair. And I always love the argument that sometimes comes from reasonably senior owner-operators, owner well, we've never had that problem. We don't have losses like that. That doesn't happen to our assets. I can only say uh, that that usually doesn't go very far. There's a 78% chance you'll have a catastrophic loss in a coal-fired plant. Combined cycle plant, you're actually a little closer to 92% of 
probability that you're going to have an event. Okay, So the statistics are not on your side. Deductible for business interruption in this case uh, was four weeks. Losses to operation, the operator, remember this morning we talked about deductibles and uh, uh, having captives, 5.2 million out of their pocket. Uh, we can skip through, got a lot of bad pictures if you want them. Uh, here's another business case, full rewind, 14 weeks, uh, property damage, 6 million, 100% loss of capacity on this particular unit. That wound up at 32 million, one month deductible. And by the way, the 30 day deductibles, <clears throat> we've just about seen the last of those with this particular renewal period, uh, June 1, 2015. Most of the insurance carriers, and another uh, facet is insurance carriers who are starting to bow out of the business. Most of them are moving to 60 to 90 day deductibles, so they want you to pay the first 60 to 90 days of all these costs. And the 14 companies that were in the business were probably going to be two less that have decided to bow out of doing business in your particular sector due to losses. Loss to the operator, this was uh, here in Europe, 9 million pounds. Loss to the insurance company, 19 million. This is really simple, folks. Uh, these people are in business to make money, and at the end of the day, they use a simple measure called a combined loss and expense ratio. It's a simple thing. You simply take away your operational expenses and the 19 million pounds that you paid, and you compare that to the pound that you took in the door. You can't take in a dollar and pay out a dollar ten for very long. You just won't be in business. So it's a, a tough situation for some of the insurers. That's the reason that when we talked this morning, you saw that makeup of all the insurance companies and the different layers and the different participations. That's the reason it's like that today. Nobody is going to take a big chunk of risk in the power industry. It's, it's just too hazardous of an approach. <clears throat> Number three, Stadder Rewind, steam turbine, 6.2 million, 100% capacity, nine months, 74 million, loss to the in, uh, operator, nine million out of their pocket, insurer paid 71 million. This is one of the more ugly ones. And when I talked this morning about big losses, and I think I made the comment 10, 15 years ago, a big loss was 50, 70 million dollars in the power industry. If you go back 20 years, Five, ten million were big hits. Today, the big hits are all around 150 to 200 million dollars. So you have to ask yourself, is your company prepared to handle those? Now, an interesting thing about captives, and we have clients moving to 50 million dollar captives to pay for losses, parking their money somewhere in the world, sits there ready to pay for the loss. What do you think they ask asset management, plant managers? If I'm gonna bite off $50 million of each and every loss that happens to me, and I own a number of power plants worldwide, the question <clears> is, <throat> can you all prevent losses from happening? What kind of an assurance can you hand to the financial side of management that losses will not happen? And that question uh, actually gets asked quite frequently internally. So critical systems, we spent time on that. I think from listening to Bill's talk and a couple of the others, I can't stress enough the online diagnostics, the condition mm -hmm. assessment, the trending, those are your salvation. Uh, without question, the better you are at that and the closer you come to this mode of failure, time to failure capability, the better you're going to be. The age-related changes are dramatic. We don't have the time to talk about all this, but for those of you who would like some more data cuts on age-related losses, uh, we can gladly supply that. We capture some of that literally right down to types of equipment form a generation, whether it's hydro or whether it's thermal, oil-based, coal-based, uh, combined cycle, and so on. So that information is available in some of the loss data that we have. But age is becoming more and more of a factor in the losses. The re-rate refurbish, I'm not going to go back to that one again. Uh, just keep in mind that the re-rate refurbish thing doesn't always work out as planned. And it's not uncommon for some of the owner operators to come back and say, we re-rated this particular unit in the plant, we were supposed to get 17 more megawatts, 
that didn't happen. Is that something that can be claimed under the insurance policy? The answer is no. That's a performance loss, not going to be paid for. Once again, that's out of your pocket. So that kind of brings me to the end. Let me reinforce that I'm going to add additional information. Uh, I'll send it so it can be included electronically. It'll include some of the uh, root cause analysis info that we have, but keep in mind, root cause analysis, uh, the insurance industry style, while we rely on the professional engineering groups that do the work in the plant, it's not as meaningful to the settlement of an insurance claim, okay, because the all-risk policy is going to pay almost no matter what, whether you leave a wrench in the machine or whether it's catastrophic loss that is unforeseen. So some of the root causes there, I just <clears throat> wouldn't want you to be disappointed. It's not going to be as granular as you might suspect, okay? So with that, I think we're done. If we need to do the panel now, we're ready. I'm ready. <laughs> okay.